This next little video clip we will call tea budding. Tea budding. Tea budding is a form of grafting. Um, as you saw on the growing of graft wood video, um, we will have picked our bud sticks in July. It's now July, end, end of July let's say. We choose July to do our tea budding because the sap is growing, at, is pushing up through this tree at its strongest. It's, it's even better still, if it's rained for a few days, there will be even more sap flowing through the tree, the rootstock, and that is the best time to do it. Essentially, we will be taking a bud from our bud stick, which we produced earlier, inserting it under the bark of this rootstock, and then tying it to it. We will tie it to it with a variety of different materials. Traditionally, uh, we can use raffia, tie the bud on with raffia, seal all that with grafting wax. Um, you would he heat that in a pot of hot water and paint the wax over the, over the raffia, that will seal it. We could also have used this here, this is grafting tape, it's clear PVC tape, it's the same tape actually that um, Tesco's bags are made of, should you want to make your own. We could, again we could use these, these are Dutch grafting rubbers and you, as you can imagine because they're stretchy rubber they will tie it very tightly. Um, they also are supposed to photo degrade, break down with the light. They don't do it in North Wales, unfortunately. Uh, they presumably do it in Holland. And probably, if you live in a sunny area, you could use those. I prefer to use this stuff, which is Japanese grafting tape. Um, this It's a parafilm tape. It breathes, it stretches, and it sticks to itself. Um, the only trouble is it's very expensive. 120 quid a box. Obviously any tape will do or any postman pack rubber bands will do because um, if you're only doing a few trees it doesn't matter. If you're doing hundreds of the bloody things like I'm doing over there or in these other polytunnels then time is of an essence. So our first thing we do is put on our safety goggles so we can see what's <laughs> going on. Um, and we will now cut a T-shaped cut in this in this rootstock. I'll roll that around there, a nice sharp knife, and cut down there. As you can see, we now have a T, and I'll open the flaps of the T. If the sap is flowing nice and strongly, which it is at the moment, it's in the end of July, we can lift those flaps of the T. We will now cut from our bud stick, try and remove a bud. I'm cutting along, I'm drawing the knife so it's more controlled. Cutting it now at an angle to help insertion. I've now removed a piece of the bark, the bud which is in there, barely visible at the tip of my knife, you can barely see it, and the PTO. The PTO is just a handy handle. It enables me to manipulate the thing. I'm now going to insert it into the, into the slot. If you use a proper budding knife, it will have um, usually a nylon or a metal extra piece on your knife to flap this, to pull your flaps open. Sometimes I use a little screwdriver. Um, but there we go, we're pushing it in there. The bud is inside the flap. It's in there now cut off that excess piece of the bud tree and you can see the bud is nicely nice and snug within that flap. We'll now take in my case the parafilm tape, stretch it and then we're binding this together. Nice and tight but not squashing the bud, leaving the bud in that 
There it is. Leaving the bud in that little space there. Uh, proud. That's it done. We now leave, hopefully, the, the wood from the, the bud will join with the wood from the rootstock. And we can tell that it's joined, that it's been successful by if in about two weeks we get our little finger and we flick this petiole, the petiole, if the bud is alive, will come off nice and cleanly, just like a leaf falls off in the autumn. An abscission, an abscission layer has been formed and the leaf will fall off quite nicely. If the bud has died, then we will find that the petiole doesn't fall off and it hangs there uh, dried up and withered. That would mean the bud has died. We now leave this rootstock to grow and sit there over winter. The bud will be dormant, it will not do anything. In March, just as the... As the, as the in, in next year, in March, when the sap starts rising, we will get our secateurs and cut, cut the rootstock off about four or five inches above the bud. The bud will then start to grow up and probably at an angle like that. Let's say at an angle like that. If we then, we've got this snag sticking up, we can then bend this new wood and tie it to the snag and that will result in a nice straight tree. Obviously, in the autumn, we can cut this snag off because we don't want that and we've got a nice straight tree as is this tree here. You can see that's where the rootstock's been cut off and that is where the bud has turned into a nice straight tree. Um, finally, if you if these are in the ground especially if you put the bud on the north side it means that it's less likely to dry out this is the bud on the north side of this piece of wood it means it's less likely to grow out to it's less likely to dry out it also means it's more likely to grow straighter because it's going towards the south and most importantly, when you're working there in July with your shirt off, you will get a nice suntan on your back. That's it. <laughs>